What a day! On the 10th of September, 10 years ago, the very first beam circulated in the LHC. A historic moment that Steve Myers remembers well, because he was in the CERN Control Center, mixed in the crowd and applauding colleagues for their achievements. It was a fantastic day, probably the, the most exciting day and all the time I've worked at CERN. Having worked on this accelerator for so many years, this was the, the, the real test of if, if all the work we had done was, was good work. And normally you will never say that we're going to circulate a beam on a given day. And we said, we told the journalists we were going to do it on that day. We thought, you know, it may go round, it may not. But we, were, we knew that we had done everything we could. That day, when we started, we thought, this is going to take a lot of time. Um, and all these journalists are here. What are we going to do if it doesn't go around? And, you know. So amazingly, we went through the first octant. And it, was, it just went straight through. And all of the diagnostics worked, the control system worked. It had been incredibly well prepared. And then we went through the second octant, the third, and the fourth, and right and made one turn. And at each time we went through, an octant is more than three kilometers, so it's, it's not a small thing. Each time we went through an octant, everybody in the control room, including the journalists, were cheering. And, um, and when we made a turn, there was a huge, I mean, people are throwing hats in the air and so on. Unfortunately, only nine days later, and 15 hours after Steve Myers had been nominated new Director of Accelerators and Technology, an electric failure in one of the 20,000 magnet interconnects of the LHC caused huge damage to 53 magnets and the accelerator was stopped. Failure was, is always an option with an accelerator and as you know when we had the accident, that was failure, that was, that was a big failure. Being director of accelerators at that time was not no gift. It was a tough job because we had to find out what went wrong, do the repair, and make sure it never happened again. Very, very stressful time for, for everybody. And I think that CERN staff really came through this incredibly well. The repair works went on for several months, during which the whole laboratory was working to make sure that the long expected first collisions would happen as soon as possible. The Higgs boson was within reach, but still far away. It appeared clear that more difficult decisions had to be taken. When we prepared the, the repair, we realized there was another more complicated accident which could happen as well. And we couldn't fix that at the same time. So what we had to do was say, we will have to operate at a lower energy than the design energy of the LHC. And this was really a very, very difficult decision. We, there were people on one side saying, you should go to 5TV at least. And there was me and most of our f colleagues here saying, the maximum energy we should go to is 3.5 TV per beam. Because if you go above that, there's a danger that you'll have a repeat of the accident. And this was really, really tough because I had to make the decision to go to lower energy, half of the design energy. On the other hand, we were afraid that 3.5 TV per beam, 7 TV collision energy, would not be enough to discover the Higgs. And it turns out, luckily for me, that first of all, we discovered the Higgs, but secondly, during the first long shutdown, we made measurements which showed that if we'd gone significantly above 4 TeV, we would have had an accident again. So those, that decision was, was, was justified. Indeed, in 2012, just about three years after the LHC had restarted operations, the ATLAS and CMS collaborations announced the discovery of the Higgs boson. Since 2016, Steve Myers, who retired from CERN, is pursuing his other passion, use accelerator physics to the benefit of medicine. Today, as head of the project of a young company, he is working on developing a new linear accelerator to treat tumors. We are hoping to be treating first patients in 2020. CERN, you have several things which are very, very advantageous. You've got such a, a depth of expertise. For something I don't know, I can always find someone who can tell me the answer to my question. On the other hand, I couldn't believe when I went to this small company and said, I need 
uh, a LIMAC specialist. And a week later, I had an offer to give to this guy who came two weeks later. People at CERN still meet Steve and see him around, but he is officially a CERN alumnus today and very proud to be a member of the community. Well, being a CERN alumni has been one of my dreams for about the last 15 years. Um, ever since I realized that CERN could set up an alumni system equivalent to some of the great universities in the United States and in the UK, um, I, as director, I pushed very hard that we, we get this going. It took a long time to get it going, but now it's working and I'm, I'm so pleased that it's working. CERN has an incredible reputation, and rightly so, because it's, um, it's, I think it's the best international organization in the world.